Hey, what's up everyone? This is Minnesota Mike back with you for another video. This is another one in my vlog series that I do through the Memphis Songwriters Association that goes with the blog that I write for them. The blog uh, focuses on songwriting techniques, uh, what has worked in various songs uh, of all different genres and, uh, you know, whether they were hits, whether they were uh, not hits. And by hits, I mean, you know, on the top 20 or, you know, 20 or higher on the billboard charts. Um, but we look at various techniques. And uh, recently, we've been uh, looking at object writing within songs. So uh, in the last video, we talked about The House That Built Me by Miranda Lambert. And then uh, we also looked at New Year's Day by Memphis's own Brian Blake. And then uh, we started off working at Denim Jacket by Maroon 5. So kind of along the lines of uh, The House That Built Me, we're going to talk about another song that uh, has to do with things around the house, and that's Give It Away by George Strait. So uh, there is something that differs this even from uh, The House That Built Me. Uh, and the other uh, songs that we looked at, which focused mainly on one singular thing, a denim jacket and a coffee cup, and then in the case of the house that built me, a house, even though there were other things that she talked about. So in the case of Give It Away, it asserts that every single thing reminds the singer of his ex-wife. Denim jacket mentions the color of the sky, triggering memories of a past love. This song asserts that he can't even stay inside, right? So you go outside, the color of the sky reminds you of her, even though it doesn't say that in this song. And then in this case, everything inside the house still reminds you of that person. There are way too many memories of the two. So a bed, a picture from their honeymoon, her diamond ring, her presumed monetary inheritance, right? Your half of everything is how he refers to it in the song. All of those things remind him of her and the or vice versa they remind her of him as well so she's just like yeah just give it away the interesting thing about the perspective of this song is that it's written from two different perspectives his inability to move on and her uncanny ability to move on he asks her whether or not she wants to keep the bed that that picture her diamond ring and her money and she just dismisses his feelings, saying, just give it away. The twist at the end is that he's left with all of this stuff and he can't even give it away. On a personal note, the first time I heard this song was when uh, Bill Anderson, who wrote the song with Jamie Johnson and Buddy Cannon, performed uh, the song at the Grand Ole Opry. So that was uh, when I heard it um, for the first time. Uh, so although I was 14 at the time, hadn't uh, really gotten my heart broken all that much, the lyrics immediately connected with me. So in addition to the lyrics, the melody, let's talk about that. It has a simple F major chord played during the verses, and this is necessary because he uses a talking pattern. However, in the chorus, he uses B flat, F, C7, and then goes to F as well, and that's the progression that he uses. Musically, there's an acoustic guitar, a pedal steel, which is that uh, kind of slide that you hear, uh, makes it a little bluesier, a violin, drums, and an electric guitar, as well as a piano at the end of the song. It's a slow rocking song, which gives you the feeling of someone who's just barely plugging along with this newfound heartache. I mentioned earlier the talking pattern that defines the verses, so now we're going to talk about the structure of the song. But that talking pattern is more reminiscent of When I Think About Leaving by Kenny Chesney, written by Tom Johnson, Rory Lee Feek, and Paul Overstreet, than a rambling talking pattern seen in songs like Alice's Restaurant, Arlo Guthrie, or Alice's Restaurant by Arlo Guthrie, I should say, or Brownsville Girl by Bob Dylan. And it should be noted that Dylan wrote Brownsville Girl with director Sam Shepard, and co-writing with a director lends itself very well to object writing. Not that that's an option for all of us, but I do want to just throw that out there. 
talk singing is a very effective technique, both in uh, terms of storytelling and then also in terms of listening. As you quickly realize, you can't afford to drift off. In the George Strait song and in the Kenny Chesney song, the talking is brief and it sets up the chorus in a hurry. It's effective in all of the songs because it makes you realize how much the singer has to process while also having to cope with the fact that she wants to give away everything they worked so hard for in the case of the George Strait song. And in the George Strait song, the twist comes at the end saying that he can't even give any of it away. So I do uh, want to embed all of those songs so you can hear the kind of talk singing pattern. Uh, it doesn't work for everything, um, but uh, I included uh, those songs that I mentioned, uh, the Kenny Chesney song, the Arlo Guthrie song, and then uh, the Bob Dylan song as well. Uh, but the uh, object writing comes in um, with the uh, George Strait song, so uh, that's definitely the one that I want you guys to focus on. And I hope that this object writing uh, video and all of the other videos about object writing have been helpful for you. Hope it's encouraged some of your writing um, to write in a slightly different way. I'm Minnesota Mike on behalf of the Memphis Songwriters Association. Thank you so much.